Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, so today we are going to ask the question, is your optimization warranted? Awesome, let's do it. Hey, everybody. So it's Jackie from Copenhagen. And Joe from Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and today we're going to talk about uh, is your optimization warranted? Right. You know, we we talked about this uh, back and forth, me and Joe, and it's not because we're talking about M code, you know, machine code running billions of lines and code is small optimizations can warrant very big um, rewards or whatever you'd call that. But yeah, in, in this case, we're talking about other types of gains from optimization and it might not always be warranted because you know, speed in general of code and, you know, it will most of the time take less time than what humans take. And in, in what we talked about here today, at least, Joe, we were talking more of, yeah, how do we put it? Um, when you use a lot of your time on optimizing something that might not gain you much uh, speed wise yeah and, and it was, i thought it was pretty interesting because we were like well what are the different types of gains and you know here are the costs are usually um you know your development time and and some things with that uh and then all right the the gain clearly is it's gonna um be better in some way but that's what i was like okay how do we weigh this balance right uh, why don't you go ahead and jump into the first one yeah i'd say with the speed and and it takes less time right it it takes less human time so if you can optimize for that so humans need to take less time that that's great but again if you use let's say three hours on saving humans uh, five seconds uh, you need a, quite a lot of humans to save those five seconds to catch up to those three hours yeah, amen to that. And that's you know, the number one thing I think with auto hockey is that's the simplest thing we're doing is how much more time am I going to, you know, work, and neither of us are saying you shouldn't optimize. It's not at all what we're saying. We're just saying, should you really take it to that nth degree? Because usually after the first or second optimization, the benefits you're going to get really often, unless you've learned something totally new, aren't going to really be that much more. But the human time is the really the one that we most often reference is, is it really going to save it? Now, if you're giving it to a staff of people, of 50 people, maybe that changes things, right? But you should be doing this, you know, comparison, right? In order to, to understand that relationship. Uh, the very next one I'd say is, hey, can you reduce the amount of errors, right? Because that's another huge one of if you can optimize it in some way and change the program where it works better, you might greatly reduce the amount of errors, which depending on what you're doing, that can save a, a phenomenal amount. Often we're converting it in some way back to money, right? Which we should you know, kind of point out, right, to some degree. Yeah, but, but again, errors is a great one because sure, we want to reduce errors, but uh, we, we talked about this at length also, Joe, where... Uh, when do we want a human to maybe take over again with the type of automation that we often do is something that interacts with the human uh, side of things. And if you're trying to optimize the human out of the equation, um, removing all types of errors can take quite a lot of time. And you might not wish to use that much time on trying to remove the human always. So again, it's a matter of, is there a gain there? Um, and I'd say the next one we have, as you covered, Joe, is costs, right? You can optimize quite a lot of stuff and you can, you can save on energy uh, consumption if you can make the code run more smoothly or if you can move stuff around so it doesn't run for hours on end. You might reduce the number of server, servers you need to have it running on, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, or even let's stick with uh, people as well too, right? Of um, 
maybe you can get it to where you you have fewer people doing it, but also maybe a little less amount of time. I know we were you, you work for a company that supplies energy, right? You have to have you often, at least here in, the, in Dallas, you know, AC running in the building, you know, but what if you could have everyone go home two hours earlier and you could save just on that electric? I mean, there's just some amazing ways if you really start thinking about it, how you could save money you know, not just with the time of the people doing the work, but other things that might be involved with it. Especially like if you're actually doing something higher powered and renting devices or something, right? And you find ways to optimize your code and you use less servers or less time, uh, it's a great way to, to save some money there. Yeah, if it now, can run on virtual machines or something like that, where you don't even need to power a, excellent a, point. a, a screen or stuff like that, so yeah. Well, yeah. So um, I thought I thought you were going to say, let's say you you realized, hey, I really need five more computers. Well, you know what? We, if like you said, we could actually put this into um, you know in the cloud, running on computers that we don't even buy, right? And you yeah. can scale in such ways. So um, it's in yeah, it's it's kind of crazy what you can do with computers, and you don't need necessarily everyone doesn't have to have a computer. I know. I think you and I both talked about it. Like when I was at TI, I had three computers that I could have doing stuff and keep them often keep at least two of them busy for a lot of the time. Right. It's, it's just, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the, the next one though, is just, it, this kind of gets back into the saving the human time, right? But the, designing an easy to use script, something that's simple, that has a nice GUI and makes what you're doing simpler. Um, I think that also leads to fewer errors, you know, designing things, restricting, or even that's one of the things I loved about auto hotkey with the like older programs and controls if there's an option you don't want people to even be able to select, you can often just remove that thing from the GUI where people can't even see it, right? That is mind-blowing as far as I'm concerned, that you can actually just hide something. They don't even see it's an option to select. And you could do that in like five minutes, right, if it has these certain types of controls. Yeah, and but again, optimization for ease of use can also be a time sink, right? People can oh, obsess about round the uh, buttons or whatever it might be and it's not really doing anything for the ease of use right square quite big text filled buttons might be a great way to have uh, your user actually finding easy to use but again you might also overcloud it or just make it too visually um busy for people to so again it's it's really a matter of when is the optimization warranted because mm, you can make it as easy as you believe it should be but it's not the same thing as end users actually finding it easy so that that again might be a good idea of making some kind of you know survey figuring out if someone actually <laughs> has an issue with the way it works before you try to optimize for ease of use. If people are already finding it pretty easy, there's probably no big gain to be had there. Well, and, and to your point, Jackie, um, DaVinci Resolve is a, tool, a very complex editing tool. Um, I hated it at first. Now I, I'm starting to really like it. Isaias was showing me the other day how to do something. And I said, I see what you're doing, but I've already memorized like the other way that's not intuitive, but now it's ingrained in my head and then I do it so easily. I'm like, I'm, I, you know, I understand what you're offering here is sort of better. It's simple, but this is, it. you know, I know it now and it's not crazy hard. So like to your point of someone probably for that tool spent a lot of time making this approach that he was showing me but I'm like, hey, I, I I got this working. It works fine. I'm not going to spend the time to learn a new way because it works fine for me. So, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, we have another one on here with smaller start size. And again, that might be an executable or it might be all the resources together for whatever you're doing. And absolutely, it can be a good idea to try and optimize for storage size or storage complexity and, uh, and things like that. Uh, again, within reason, we know that it has been one of those very 
much beaten horses within the community that we come from, that it's great to make sure it's small, it's uh, very compact, but we haven't ourselves had many issues with the size of stuff that we have done. But again, it, it depends on the situation, of course. If you have it placed on servers or virtual computers and if it's become very bulky, um, you might be able to compress some of the resources or other things like that that will make a, you able to have, I don't know, a smaller storage sizes on the virtual computers that you're wishing to run. Stuff well, like that, which yeah. again can yeah. bear into cost. Yeah, and, every, and you're absolutely spot on, Jackie, as far as all that goes with when Because this was what I snuck in there myself and I should have labeled it better for what I meant by it. Because there's a couple of things I can say. It, it's more about the files, like let's say like with FFmpeg, I had a process where I could run it through FFmpeg. Well, the newer version of FFmpeg has the H265 uh, encoder and it took me a little while to adapt my code, but the code, the videos now, they shrink down to like a quarter of the size of the initial video. Instead of being, you know, 100 megs, it's 25 megs. And like, this is amazing for me, right? So it wasn't necessarily the program itself is what I meant by the storage size, but you're still, I mean, it is a concern, right? Um, it, it's the the kind of the data side of things that you're doing. You might be able to optimize your code to create better, more compact data. Because the other one I was going to say was, you know, years ago, Maestrith and I would be doing a lot of stuff in XML. And then we started learning JSON. I'm sorry. Well, we, we learned to play with JSON, but it was um, SQL databases. So we started playing with and realized, hey, when we have over like 20,000 records, the XML thing, even though it's fast at that lower end, really peaks out and starts really bogging down and stuff. And the file size also gets crazy, but inside a SQL database, there's more overhead, but holy cow, like it's lightning fast at yeah. pulling data. So th that was what I was referring to, what I was meaning. Um, you really could find some really cool ways to optimize and, and save server space, save your hard drive space, you know, a lot of stuff. Uh, but it, it really, you know, you do have to pay attention to it because Often, you know, maybe it maybe doesn't pay out, right? But it's it's good to know those different approaches. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, the next one was it was actually what you were you were describing to me of just um, employees in general, or, or you know, using their computers, and, and that's where I was like, hey, you know, part of this aspect is if my computer is not going to be used for something else, while you know, let, let's say I was going to run something, and normally I I kick it off. And I'm because I'm done at the end of the day anyway, and my computer would just sit there and process it. Does it really matter if I optimize that code? Because it wouldn't be doing anything anyway. So if that's the situation, you really got to, you know, come up with a really good reason why you should opt spend time to optimize your code if your computer isn't, you know, at 100% capacity in the first place or, or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think that makes quite a lot of sense. And, and I'd say you could put it out into quite a lot of stuff. When, when I think about my own company as a whole, I know quite a lot of my colleagues, they lock their computers when they leave work, but many of them don't uh, turn them off. And so they're running on idle or whatever you'd say there. And it's, it's an amazing amount of computer power just lying dormant. There are uh, thousands of computers, maybe, and thousands of um, CPU hours or whatever you'd, you'd go for there. Companies could probably utilize their computer hardware in general much more uh, wisely uh, because they're still consuming power. They're still being... Uh, worn out might be a way of putting it there's they still have some kind of time span kind of counting down on how long they will actually last and stuff like that so opportunity lost is is quite one of those big ones where i have had many a script or program run after i left my computer many times only for maybe an hour or two after I left. But the general idea of having that 
opportunity of a computer that could be doing who knows what while I wasn't there is, is an interesting one. Yeah, um, and I, I think overall, it's just one of those things we all often will get into a habit and think, hey, let me, let me improve this thing. And rarely do we often say, is it really going to be worth the effort you put? Now, the thing we didn't also describe is for the developer, that little extra effort to optimize and stuff, they might learn things that they get to reuse in future things, right? Which is something really hard to quantify because you're, it's an investment, right? And you're investing in yourself often or the developer. And later on, they can repurpose what they've done. And so it does pay out on new, new items. We'll start off with this better design. Right. So it isn't that you shouldn't do it at all. It just makes sure you give it some thought. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why is your optimization warranted? And it can be, uh, you know, nine times out of 10, it might be. Right? It's, it's not us saying that you should never optimize because I've learned many a times things by trying to optimize a small bit of the thing. And sometimes it's, it, it really pans out and gives you some great um, new learned skill. And other times it probably wasn't needed, but again, um, you either have the time or you're pushing something else aside to try and optimize something that doesn't need it. So, yeah. No, yeah, Jack, you actually, yeah. Uh, well, you just you just made me rethink a, a different interpretation of the unused um, of the opportunity loss of like, hey, I could have optimized this one thing, but what what other thing did I not do that I could have actually created for that we didn't even have something up, you know, an, an automation for? So that's that. Hey, if I spent my time optimizing this, I didn't even create this new thing, right? Which is a whole different area. Yeah, yeah, and we talked about this uh, uh, at length uh, sh shortly before this. And the general idea of optimizing code that might always already be working and is might not be flawless, but it's close to what you need, and you have the uh, the computer time to let it run without you using your personal time on it or whatever it might be. So, so yeah, you could probably use that time on something else that might be even more beneficial. All right, well, uh, let us know if there's some other things we should have thought of and brought up in this. And, you know, the other thing I wanna you know, make it clear also is we weren't talking about like refactoring and, you know, looking at code. This is clearly trying, you know, trying to find a better approach and spending time noodling around to try to see if it performs better and faster usually. And, you know, that that's, I think, a little more of what we're trying to go for. Yeah, you. Yeah, uh, there can be many things that warrant restructuring code or refactoring it or stuff like that. But the general idea of optimizing for some of these things that we said here needs a little extra thought. Awesome. All right. See you soon. Thanks. Absolutely.